So this discussion will be about uh, basal joint arthritis of the thumb, which is a very painful um, degenerative condition of this joint here at the base of the thumb. Um, it affects um, people after 50 years of age primarily, uh, unless they've had accidents before uh, that have damaged the joint. Um, mostly women, probably three to four times more often than men, but it definitely happens in men as well. And people complain of pain in this area when they're trying to pick up um, uh, small objects or when they're trying to turn a key or open a jar or peel a potato or something like that. It can be quite disabling. Um, and then so they come and they have this pain. So the initial evaluation obviously would involve x will involve x-rays to um, to have an idea of what stage they're at because there's multiple stages basically radiologically from one to four one is the earliest and the four is the worst um, so you want to know where they are so an x-ray will be required an ultrasound examination can be useful for inflammation um, synovitis and subluxation of the joint so i'd like to perform that as well and then um, I will also consider um, the needs of the patient I have in front of me, uh, their age, their level of activity, and their preferences, obviously, and also their types of activities like sports and, and such things, and work, obviously. So depending on what um, stages they're at, um, then several surgical options exist, and we'll talk about those in a second. But Obviously, before you consider surgery, there's other options to cons consider that are non-surgical, and those include anti-inflammatory medication, splinting, bracing, um, um, and protection of the joint, obviously, uh, and changes in diet. I recommend staying away from dairy, staying away from gluten, uh, cutting down alcohol consumption significantly, cutting down sugar consumption. And then there's a bunch of supplements that can be useful to uh, help your joints, like collagen type 2, HA, um, the devil's claw, turmeric, uh, cayenne pepper, uh, glucosamine, chondroitin, and um, all these supplements um, have a place in management, in the management of this painful condition. So. Um, then um, the next step is injection, so we can in inject a steroid. Uh, but the problem with that, it can contribute to the degeneration of the joint if you give too much. Um, or you can inject um, HA, hyaluronic acid, which is like a lubricant in the joint that tends to work quite well uh, for a lot of patients. Um, both these injections were, would be performed under ultrasound guidance for more accuracy. I make sure the, the needle is in the right spot and then I would immobilize with a custom-made brace um, the, these thumbs for you know uh, 10 days or something like that to to maximize the uh, the outcome and, and these uh, injections tend to be um, successful in alleviating symptoms for anywhere between six months to 12 to 18 months depending on the case um, and which is obviously different in each patient and then there's also PRP which is platelet-rich plasma uh, that can be promising um, in early cases but then when all that fails, then, then that's when surgery is required. And then it can go all the way from a small arthroscopic procedure where you go in and clean up the joint in early cases um, to more extensive surgeries. And the most um, extensive surgeries is a procedure called a trapezectomy, where you need to remove a small bone at the base of the thumb to get rid of the, the painful rubbing of bare bone against bare bone with inflammation, obviously. Um, and then in between these two options, you also have another one, which is joint reconstruction with an implant. That's a procedure that I've been performing for since 2000. So it's been a long time already um, with several generations of different implants. Uh, think of it like a, you know, like a mini hip, hip implant where you basically reconstruct the whole joint uh, with different components, um, you really create a new joint. And the benefit of that is that you are reconstructing the joint rather than taking anything uh, away that was created for a reason. Um, I like joint replacement uh, for the right patient. 
uh, because it comes with a shorter um, recovery time and better motion, better strength, better dexterity. Patients like it. Um, and uh, But it's not for everyone. So I think it's important to assess your patient to realize uh, which stage they're at and uh, what the best option for them is and to uh, weigh the pros and the cons in each case. So I don't believe in a cookie cutter approach where there's one treatment for everyone. It's really an individualized uh, approach. Always try uh, the non-surgical approach first. I like to uh, introduce supplements and diet changes. When that fails, then we move on to injections. And then when that fails, we move on to surgery. And then when surgery is contemplated, then there's different options. And those options will depend on who the patient is, how they're using their hands, how old they are, which type of activities they enjoy doing, and uh, what kind of downtime um, they can afford. And then, um, and then that's how that's how we treat their arthritis. But uh, the exciting news is that the results have increased um, in quality tremendously over the last 50 years. And um, we have options today that are less invasive that, and that, that were just not available uh, 20 years ago. Again, this is not mainstream, but uh, I think if uh, you uh, seek out a specialized hand surgeon, uh, not just a hand surgeon, but somebody who specializes in joint reconstruction of this particular, particular pathology, then you have access to, um, to uh, more options. And I think it's always better to have uh, a more uh, customized approach to your own needs. Uh, there are a number of us out there uh, all around the world. So um, um, if, if you're not from my area, if you reach out, I can, I can help you find the, the right, the nice, uh, the good match for you. But uh, the, the news are good. There's uh, better, there are better options out there today. Thank you.